Now, folks, what I'm about to show you is not necessarily the best way to uh, take care of your cast iron. There's a lot of controversy about putting your cast iron in a burning fire to remove the seasoning that you don't want on there. In other words, you're burning the cast iron out. But they've done this a long time in the good old days of wagon trains and such. And Well, it was the method that they used. And I'm repeating the process here. This is not my first time to do this. I've done it quite several, many, many, many times. Since my mom showed me how to. Uh, back when I was a kid. <laughs> and, uh, yep, it works. So, yeah, let's take a look. Well, finally kind of got a fire going here. I know, cast iron folks, they just, they're going to have a fit when they see this. Got two Birmingham stove and range corn muffin pans. I'm trying to burn the, the rust off the one on the left and the seasoning off the one on the right. And uh, man, I tried it in the oven. All I do is putting the smell off to the house and we couldn't handle that even with the windows open. So, going back old school. Let's see if this thing holds together. Cracks, damages, warps, whatever. But the one on the right is actually the old one. It's uh, zoom in. You can see it's kind of like hand scripted on there. That's cool or that particular type. The one on the left, you can't see it because it's got so much rust on it. But, we'll give this a little while and see what happens. Yeah, it's coming along pretty good now. They're sticking out the edges there. That's not where I wanted it, but place them on top of the coals and uh, have some twigs and stuff on top to keep that fire burning. Ooh, I think it's going to work out real nice. I say it's not a super hot fire. This ain't no house fire by any means. And it does a much better job than the stove ever could. But like I say, these are not family heirlooms. I just want to get these things working. Alright, the fire is finally burnt down pretty good. And uh, you can see a little piece of the cast iron right there. Sticking out the edge. And like I say, these are Birmingham stove and ranges corn muffin pans were burning out here and so most people will uh, let this fire burn all the way down and they'll pull the cast iron out first thing in the morning I like to let it cool down in the bed of coals but I'm not going to do that I'm going to get us about 30 more minutes or so I'm going to pull it out because I, I've only got today to get this done so I'm kind of a rush procedure here well I think it's about time to give this thing here a looky see and uh, right in here is the, yeah, I'm going to pull the first piece out. Take a look at it right now. Oh, yeah, that's burning a lot of that seasoning off of there. That's the one that was encrusted uh, jet black. It was uh, a real nice seasoning they had on there, but I say this had to come off. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's just a fire and fine powder now. Number two is right in here somewhere. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and here. That's the one that was actually rusted. And it's not a white powder like this other one. And uh, it's going to take a little more cleaning. But at least we've got a good start on it. Yeah. So I think I'm going to set these out of the fire, let them cool down uh, gradually. That's the problem you have with cracked and warped cast iron is cooling, the, cooling them down too quick. That's why a lot of times they like to leave it in the fire overnight or at the end of the day or whatever the case may be to let it cool down slowly while inside the fire. But I don't have that luxury of time here. So let's take this one over here on some of these timbers. Oh, we got some ants there. They're, they're really going to enjoy this burn the ants while we're at it and that's probably hot enough to make this timber start smoking don't know but anyway <laughs> this is where we're gonna place them Let them cool down.
Okay, back here in this cut with uh, the original. I call this a newer model. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, this is what I believe to be the older one. Now, you can really see the color difference in that. And that's what's odd. This thing here looked black until I brought it out here under the natural sunlight. Or a cloudy day, I should say. And here's the, the blackened one that was actually browner. That color there was all over it. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. This one here was only treated, I think, uh, I think I treated it a couple, well, I did, I treated it a couple of times. Uh, getting it to where it doesn't rust. But it wasn't ready to actually put cornbread in there yet. This is why I call this one here the, the older version because of the stamp that's on there. 7SY, which is a 7 stick. And Y, I think, would be the, the mold. And I'll see if I can turn this in here back over. <laughs> it's still hot. Upside down. This looks like a more modern type of stamp. 7B and then a K and a number one. Interesting. So which one's the older version? Which one's the newer version? Don't really know. Just having fun with cornbread stick pans. Birmingham Stove and Range, I do believe. I'm not making excuses. I, I know it sounds like I am, but when I built the fire to burn out these two corn stick pans, uh, BSRs, is my wood was very wet. This was the next day after the tornado. We had the tornado warnings and then we actually shot the video of the tornado burgers. This was the actual next day with all wet wood. And I tried to get a fire going, which I did successfully. I know how to get a fire going with wet wood. But to get enough wood to get it going on, to do the fire that I needed to do this with, just wasn't gonna happen. So I kinda got it halfway done. I had success with the first BSR. Y'all have already seen it. I'm going to show it to you again. Here's the first piece. This is the piece that was already seasoned. However, it was credited up with extra seasoning on the back. And we got all that cleaned off in the campfire. But the piece that had all the rust on it, <laughs> the fire wasn't hot enough to take care of that rust. So now I'm using a vinegar moment method. And it's going to work out perfectly. And I'm trying to get this thing here done. Now when it comes to re-seasoning on a campfire, go ahead, Mo popping the top that's why I'm screaming oh, yeah. trying to season some cast iron on an actual campfire well that's coming up next in the series so you need to pay attention and stay tuned for it campfire it works stripping and re-seasoning it does work there's no cracks there's no blemishes there's nothing wrong with this it was done with a campfire the one with the rust I'm having some difficulty with because well it's full of details and the wire brush the SOS pad Nothing would get it out, and the fact that the fire wasn't hot to loosen up the rust. It was a bad piece of cast iron. I mean, it was tough, and I almost met my, my match there. So, I'm going to finish this in here up. We're going to get this thing stripped down with the rest of this vinegar and get it re-seasoned so y'all can see it here on this particular video. Version 1, let's see how well number 2 turns out. Yeah, man, that's... That does burn your nose. That's rusty. <laughs> well, that's vinegary. Let me get over here and show you what I'm talking about. See this area right here? Yeah. Maybe we need a pickle. Wire brush, this is the, the hyper tough brush that I tell you about. The problem is is that when I see it now, hopefully you can see that. You see how it's turning it's coming off. red? See it red? That's rust underneath the seedling. And it's not good. What do you mean it ain't good? It, it's coming off. Yeah, it's coming off, but I'm talking about you can't season on top of rust. That's oh. the problem. The campfire didn't get it off. Because the campfire just wasn't hot enough to burn the rust off. Well, it's raining, didn't it? I know, man. It's been nothing but wet. And we're just going to sit there and use this wire brush. Here's a black one. I'm going to hit it a few times. Hey, it's working, man. Seriously. I may have to do this a third time. I don't know if y'all people can actually see this, but this is a technique known by several hundred people. Yeah. And, well, Except for me. They love vinegar. Uh, vinegar does work. But I, I'm not using it yet. Look at your finger. Yeah. Yeah. That's the seasoning coming off. So oh. it does eventually. But it's not designed to get seasoning off. It's designed to cut the rust. 
And now my rust is being protected by the season. And that's kind of like <coughs> defeat the purpose. Here we go. We'll put it back in the vinegary. The pan's not big enough. There's some black stuff coming off of there. That's the seeding and some rust. And that, now it's just kind of brownish red. Turning orange. It's like, it don't look too appetizing. It looks gnarly. So, we run this thing under the sink. Let's run this daggum thing here. I can still see that red in there. It's not down to the bare metal yet. Like I said, I'm trying to cut through the daggum seeding to get back to the rust. And that's not cool. Papa Jesus put a, a, a sander. And then he, a two, two types of sanders on it. You know what? That would probably work for a cast iron pan, but how are they going to work on something like this? This detail. This is the wrong thing for me to sit there and show this on. This takes some TLC. A lot of elbow grease, so... Back in the pan it goes with some more distilled vinegar. Slogan number three. <laughs> Back in the rust bucket. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, here is the after effects of the burning in the fire in the vinaigrette bath on the one on your left. Wow. This is the newer piece that was actually totally covered in rust. This is the older piece that when I purchased it, it actually had a very good thick coat and seasoning on it that I had to burn off because it was crusted. Now you can see, hopefully, uh, I'm out here in the natural sunlight, so hopefully you get a better view. This is a much darker piece from the seasoning. This is still lighter. Uh, that is because I haven't fully seasoned this pan yet. I, was not con I wasn't really quite happy with the way it turned out. And what I wanted to show you was some of the, right here on the handle edges, you can see the pitting in there. That was rust damage. On the older piece, where it was actually taken care of, it's a lot, lot smoother. I've got a dog that's running around and just, he's, he's being a pain in the butt. So, uh, same thing on this end. This is the good piece, the older piece, and now you can see the pitting, hopefully, the, the rust damage that was on this one. Uh, I really should not have purchased this one. I was really, it, to me it was just a challenge. But man, I'm telling you what, it, this one here whooped my butt. It really did because of the indentions of the corn and stuff in there, all the details. All this was full of rust, especially toward the ends here, on all the ends. They were fully formed with rust. I ended up having to get a Dremel tool with a wire brush that fit it to get each and every little single nook and cranny. And every time I drilled into it, it was like red dust just pulling out of it. So this was actually in worse shape than this one was. And this is the older piece. That's what's crazy. So let me go ahead and turn it around so y'all can see the, the logo in the back. Now we've already used this pan to cook cornbread in. And uh, you're going to see that footage here at the very end. And in order to see this, I've got to turn it like so. And this is the 7B. There it is. Excuse me. 7B. And then it's got the number seven and then a number one, which I think is for the mold mark or mold, whatever the heck it is. But it has a newer type of typing on there. And that's what makes me wonder. That's a bad angle. There we go. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. 7B. And then we've got what appears to be a K. There's something in front of that K. I'm not sure. It, is, it looks like the letter I or 1K or something. I'm not sure. But underneath there appears to be kind of a Roman numeral. That may be an, well, I think like an F now or an H. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to see the indentions in that thing. But the older model, you can definitely clearly see a 7S and Y, which is... So, I'm assuming both of these are actually Birmingham Stove and Range because they're, they're absolutely identical, even in the handles, the whole nine yards. We had a lot of fun with it. And uh, this is definitely one we're definitely going to be using. And, of course, it's sitting in the chair here, but fire damage? No, this thing here is absolutely level. I know I've got an inverted chair here to sit there and try to stop. This here is the same. 
but it has all those pittings in there and it's kind of a letdown after I got it cleaned up but eh, man, what can you what can you say you know if you like playing with cast iron and this was actually definitely cheaper than this one here Oh, y'all take a look at this right here. This is the first BSR cornbread stick muffin pan. And Wee Wee has cooked her some cornbread on it. And uh, this is not the one that was rusted. Don't show me. Well, I gotta show you. This is not the one that was rusted. It's sitting over there right there in the background. That's been seasoned, I, I think, a total of three times now. It needs a little bit more. This is the first one. And boy, look at how shiny that thing is. And watch this. <laughs> it's non-stick non-stick oh that, that broke that a little bit good. that's alright but it's non-stickable that's right that's going to be the one we're going to be proud of right there mm -hmm. so that's a success to let y'all know you can sit there and do what you got to do on a campfire to remove the seasonings however the rust well tell you what there's a lot of elbow grease and work going into that the pans have not cracked, they've not broken, they've not warped. Uh, they just, that one there just needed a lot of TLC. And I'm going to get it going back in action here very soon. So until next time, until next time I should say, this is Amateur Artist Mardi Chandler once again from Manland.